Hello people, so in this tutorial we are going to be covering uh, simple player movements, camera movements and adding a simple light, in our case it will be a sun. Hello people, so let's dive right in. First off we're gonna add a character body 3D, uh, we can rename it player and just like we did with our floor we're gonna add a mesh instance 3D for the visuals and a collision shape. 3D for the collisions. We're gonna go into mesh, add a mesh. We're gonna use the capsule mesh. Then we're gonna press on the mesh and resize it to 0 0.4 and the height 1.8. These are more human-like uh, dimensions. Then we can uh, we can add a collision mesh. Go into radius, change 0 0.4 and 1.8, so it fits well together. Uh, we're gonna make the player uh, its own scene so we don't mess up the transforms and stuff. Uh, make sure when you make it a scene that you press on the player and in transform make sure everything is at zero. Then press save branch as scene player.tscn and let's save it into objects. Now we can open the scene. Once in the scene we're gonna add a script to our player. When we add the script, we want to make sure template template is checked in. Not like this, like this has to be checked in. Uh, the path for the script, let's set it to scripts, open. Now we can see it's in the scripts. Let's press on create. As you can see, there's already a lot of code. Uh, these are very simple movements. We're gonna use them, they're pre-made in Godot. It will save us a bit of coding. Uh, later in the tutorial, we're, we're gonna change a bit of the movements and uh, I'll show you how to make them uh, yourself if you prefer. But there's no need to make it yourself because these ones are, are pretty good. Now we can go into the player and we're gonna add a camera to our player because we want to be able to see. So now it's just a camera. We can put the camera higher. Oh, if the camera snaps, uh, you can press on control and it won't snap anymore and put it at uh, this height, like pr pretty much uh, eyes height. Then we can go into world and we can take our player and put it above the crown. Uh, we can press play. When we press play and, the, and we didn't choose a scene at the beginning of a project, we're gonna press select and select our, our world scene. Then we can see our scene is totally black and uh we can move with the arrows and we can see that the border is moving yep we can move uh first off uh, let's add a directional light directional light 3d this way there's going to be at least a sun so we will be able to see something uh the position of the directional light doesn't matter uh, if, if it's right there, right there, it doesn't change anything. The only thing that matters is the angle. So I'm just going to put it like right above. We can press play again. And now we have a nice looking grass. Not very nice looking, but better than a black plane. So then uh, into player, uh, we're going to go into player. And we want to change the inputs because moving with the arrows feels a bit, uh, I don't know, clunky. <laughs> so we're gonna go and change the input. We can simply rename them. Uh, I'll just remove the UI before every, um, every key. And I'm gonna change this one to jump. When we want to set keys, we call them inputs and we gotta go in the inputs map to change them. So project, I, I did it fast. Project, project settings, input map. In there, we're gonna put it there. Uh, we're gonna press on add a new action. I'm gonna call it jump, press on add. And now the new action jump is created. I'm gonna press on the plus right there and press on S, uh, space. And as you can see, now it is find it as space, I'm gonna press on OK. And here it's written space physical. So we're, we're going to do this for every single uh, key that we want. So left, right, up, down. 
left, right, up, and then down. Now we should be able to move with WASD. Then, I mean, we can test it. Let's test it. And yeah, I can move with WASD and I can jump. What is missing for our player controller to be perfect, I would say, um, is making sure we don't see the mouse. And when we move the mouse, the camera moves. In order to do this, we're going to need two variables. The first one will be sensitivity. And as you may know, sensitivity is the sensitivity uh, of your mouse. So sensitivity, and it's going to be equal to 0 0.003. Uh, this is the number for me, the value for me for my mouse, my DPI, but uh, for you it might be higher or lower depending on your mouse uh, DPI. Then I'm gonna call a second variable and it will be the camera variable. So we're gonna need the camera. So camera, so dollar sign, camera 3D. And oh yeah, I forgot, we have to put a unready before the variable. So uh, I'm gonna show you what this line is doing. We're gonna go into player. Uh, as you can see here, camera 3D, it's the name of the camera. So we're referencing the name of the camera with the dollar sign and camera will now be equal to this camera, this specific camera. Uh, the unready part is, it's just saying that when the scene, the player scene, the player instance is ready, uh, we're gonna set the variable camera equal to camera. Because if we set it before the, the scene, the player scene is ready, uh, the camera might not be uh, instantiated at that moment. So then we're gonna call a function unhandled input and type if event is in, oh, input event mouse motion. So what are we saying? Uh, unhandled input is a function that access the input that we're pressing so the keys that we're pressing and the input also includes your mouse so the event that we're we're calling the event part and if the event that is happening is input event mouse motion so the mouse motion we will do a certain thing in our case we'll be moving our camera so we want to rotate our camera on the y axis by minus event dot relative dot x times sensitivity. Event is our mouse motion. Relative dot x is our mouse motion on the x axis. So on this axis. And rotate y will rotate on the y our player because we are in the player script. Then we're gonna go and call camera. So we're referencing our, var our variable dot rotate x and the angle will be minus event dot relative dot y times sensitivity so same thing now on the y axis we're gonna rotate our camera on the x axis uh, you can go in your player uh, scene and play with the camera play with the axis and you're gonna see why uh, we're modifying the x axis and the y axis then we're gonna clamp our camera rotation because we don't want our player to be able to make 360s with his head. So we're gonna go and call camera rotation rotation dot x equal clamp. So clamp is the function that will keep a certain value between a minimum and a maximum. So between a in a range, and the value will be camera dot rotation dot x. Uh, the min value will be dag to rad minus 60 and dag to rad 70. Good. So now we should have a fully functional camera. Let's press. And yeah, the camera is working. So as you can see, I still have my mouse that is visible and we don't want, we don't want that. So we're going to go in the, we're going to go and call a function ready. So function ready this function executes only once when the instance or the scene is ready so in our case the player scene so function ready we're gonna call input that mouse mode equal input that mouse mode captured 
pretty straightforward. We're gonna we're referencing the mouse mode and we're setting mouse mode to mouse mode capture. So what does captured does? It keeps the mouse in the middle of the screen and it's it hides it. Then we're gonna call a function process because now our mouse will be stuck in the middle of the screen. So we want to make sure we have a way to close our game. So if input that is action just press, uh, we're gonna call it escape uh, get three dot quit. So this line makes uh, the game uh, quit. Basically, we leave the game, and escape is the key that we're gonna have to go and bind. So escape add add escape press on escape and now escape will be referencing right there let's test it and it works our mouse is hidden and we can control our camera with it good and if we press escape the game closes so everything works fine good i hope you liked this tutorial uh in the next episode we're going to be looking at uh, our environment node um in that will be a new node that we will cover in the next tutorial and we will make sure our environment looks better. Also, I'll be giving you a full asset pack to make your little beautiful world at your own tastes. Thanks, see you then.